In today's video, we're going to be demonstrating the blue bottle exercise. This project is used throughout college curriculum as an example of reduction oxidation reactions. It is a pretty simple project that highlights many different ideas of chemistry, including kinetics, conjugated and non-conjugated structures, and why we see the colors we see. Though I'll talk more about this later, so let's get into it. The materials we will need for this project are pretty simple and can be found locally, however I ended up getting almost all of my supplies from a chemical supply company, specifically homeandsciencetools.com, because they allow me to buy smaller quantities for cooler projects like this one. In the past I have had projects where I am forced to buy a hundred times more of the product than I need, and it just takes up space unless I revisit those projects. First, we'll need potassium hydroxide, or sodium hydroxide. I choose to work with potassium hydroxide for this video though, and if you want to use sodium hydroxide, just make sure to use the same molecular weight that is equivalent to the potassium hydroxide. Next, we'll need dextrose, or glucose. Dextrose is just the dextro enantiomer of glucose, though commercially they are almost the exact same. And finally, we'll need a 1% solution of methylene blue. Methylene blue has a rich history of medicinal uses, though most commonly today it is used as a stain or dye for x-rays and during surgeries. Though in the past, large doses of methylene blue have been used to treat potassium cyanide poisoning. Anyway, let's get started. The first thing we will do is add about 125 milliliters of water into an Erlenmeyer flask. Next, I drop in a stir bar and add in 5 grams of dextrose. Dextrose is really soluble in water, however, you want to make sure all of it dissolves so I turn on stirring and it dissolves almost immediately. Following this, I add in 4 grams of potassium hydroxide, and once again, just to make sure everything dissolves, I turn on the stir bar. I then add some of the solution into a small mason jar. I am only using about half the solution I make, so we have some more for later. Eventually, the dextrose does degrade, though that usually takes about 4 hours. Finally, we add in 2 drops of methylene blue, and we can see that it initially kind of just floats on top. Though, as it does spread out, there is actually something starting to happen here, and the methylene blue is slowly being reduced to its colorless form. That can be fully seen when I slowly mix around the jar and we watch the, as the blue color fades. Then, I shake the jar again to reoxidize the methylene blue. The rate at which the color fades is directly related to the reactants used. In this case, potassium hydroxide, glucose, and methylene blue. However, we can also change the temperature of this solution, and that affects the speed in which the color changes as well. These two ideas are the basics of kinetics and chemistry. Kinetics is an entire branch of chemistry, and it deals with studying the rates of reactions that take place. And when we change the reactants, the reaction time also changes. If we want the reaction to take place faster, we can add in more reducing agents, and if we want the color change to take longer, we can either add in additional methylene blue or less potassium hydroxide and glucose. So let's actually talk about what's going on here. We started with potassium hydroxide, glucose, and water. This is actually where the first reaction is taking place. The reaction is between the potassium hydroxide and glucose itself. Hydroxides such as potassium hydroxide are great oxidation agents. When glucose is oxidized by the potassium hydroxide, it undergoes an acid-base reaction to change into the glucoside anion. From here, the glucoside anion is oxidized into gluconolactone. When we add in our methylene blue, the oxidation of glucose is paired with the reduction of the methylene blue. In chemistry, a reduction is something that gains electrons, and during oxidation, something loses electrons. When these two reactions are coupled together, it is generally called a redux reaction for short. After about 10 times, the solution will start to take longer and longer to reduce the methylene blue back to colorless. From here, I check the pH of our now used solution, and it comes out extremely basic with a pH of around 13 or 14. To clean this up, we just need to neutralize the solution down to between 5 and 7 pH. To do this, I add in some 30% acetic acid. This creates potassium acetate, which is actually 100% okay to dump down the drain. Though, that is just here in the US and it is always best to check with your local authorities before dumping chemicals down the drain. 
We can do this reaction in a slightly different way to show that the glucose is the real reducing agent though. To show this, we will repeat this demonstration, but add the reactants in a different order. Previously, we added potassium hydroxide and glucose to the water before adding the methylene blue. This time, however, we will add the potassium hydroxide, let that dissolve completely, followed by adding in the methylene blue. Once everything is mixed, we can add in our glucose powder and watch the reaction takes place as the glucose turns into the glucoside anion and finally oxidates down to gluconolactone. The basis of this experiment is oxidation of glucose with the reduction of oxygen. The agent in both solutions is the methylene blue. Methylene blue under basic conditions will oxidize, or strip an electron from, the glucose molecule. Adding oxygen to the solution by shaking the flask causes the methylene blue to reduce the oxygen by transferring the electron that it received from the glucose to oxygen. Methylene blue, as we have seen in this project, has two forms. The oxidized form of methylene blue, which is obviously blue, but when we reduce it down to its colorless form, we can actually call it leucomethylene blue. The reason we see color changes, and color in general, can be brought up during this demonstration as well. Very quickly, I'm going to go in depth about color and why we perceive colors that we see. It all has to do with the electromagnetic spectrum of light, specifically the visible spectrum. This spectrum holds all of the colors in light that our eyes can perceive from the world. When light interacts with an object, it absorbs part of the spectrum and in turn bounces all of the non-absorbed light back into our eyes and we see color. For example, if there is a blue object, like our methylene blue, it is actually because all of the yellow and orange light is being absorbed by the methylene blue, only allowing the blue to be back, bounced back, and that's why we see a blue color. Something even more interesting though is that the structure of a molecule has to do with the colors that are absorbed and what colors are reflected. More complex molecules have multiple conjugated bonds, and these appear to be colored. For multiple bonds to be conjugated, they must be alternating in a double bond, single bond, double bond, etc. arrangement. Color change happens when the outer valence ring of electrons is given energy and goes from its ground state to an excited higher state. We can see this happen in methylene blue. It gains electrons and goes into an excited state. For molecules having conjugated systems of electrons, the ground states and excited states of electrons are closer in energy than for a non-conjugated system. This means that lower energy light is needed to excite the electrons. Now, I understand that all of this was still a simple explanation of light and color, and there is much more to be talked about. I might even start a small series about light itself. For example, life, light is the only self-propelling energy known to us, so there's a lot of cool things that can and possibly will be done in the future. Anyway, that's all I really have to say about this demonstration, and thank you to all my Patreon subscribers who helped make this video possible. All donations go directly into buying new materials and equipments for future videos, and you can see their names here. Here is a list of all the videos I'm planning in the direct future, and until next time, have a great rest of your day.